Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back once again to the Inside Analysis Virtual Summit. Yours truly, Eric Cavanaugh, is here with an all-star cast, folks. We're going to be talking about insight by association, exploration without constraints, analytics. It's a hot topic on this show. We talk about it all the time, frankly. Uh, it's very, very good stuff. And what does it really entail? It entails discovery. It entails finding insights. Well, how do you find those insights? A lot of times you have to know which questions to ask. One thing I've always loved about an associative engine is that it reveals relationships to you, kind of like a graph does. So a graph database is all about relationships, nodes and edges, things of this nature. But the thing is, if you can see how certain entities align, if you can see where there is covariance, where there's a relationship, that's a good start. And it can kind of help you go down the right path to get some meaningful insights. Because let's face it, discovery is a process. It takes time. You have to work with the data, look at the data, try to understand the data. That takes time. And we're going to talk today about the associative engine. And we're going to hear from Aaron Wilson, good buddy of mine from Athena Solutions. He's going to be with us. Jim Smith from Click is here. And my good friend David Linthicum will join us for the radio show component of this show. And with that, let me hand it off to Aaron Wilson. Take it away. Uh, thanks, Eric. Can you hear me? Yep, you sound good. Okay, that's a good start. Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us. And as Eric just said, the topic for the show today is a unique feature of Click's visualization and analytics platform called the Associative Engine. And I think it's a great topic because the, even people who use visualization tools in their work may not know about the Associative Engine or they may have heard about it but never really delved into the topic and learned about it. So I think people in the audience will likely learn something new here in our discussion. And my name is Aaron Wilson. I'm with Athena Solutions. We are a data management consultancy. As you can see us there on your screen, we offer a wide range of services around data management, including helping clients with their data management strategy, data governance, analytics, and data architecture. So before we talk about associative analytics, I thought I'd just briefly back up a bit and talk about the big picture landscape of data visualizations. And as you can see, these products have really taken off with all kinds of organizations in recent years. Um, the market stood at 4.5 billion in 2017. And as of last year, in a space of only six years, it's nearly doubled. And for most of our audience, the reasons for that growth are pretty easy to understand. Uh, one of the big drivers of that growth is the analytical capabilities that these products have. Um, at the risk of showing my age here, uh, in the first few years of my career, working for a well-known and very big investment company, I was responsible for generating huge, very chart-heavy, data-intensive presentations for a portfolio management team. All of this was done in Excel, of course, at the time, with the help of some pretty gnarly VBA macros. Um, but visualization has come a long, long way since then. Um, and these tools are still great for charts and dashboards and the like, but it's fair to say that the use of these tools has been evolving and it's been moving mainly in the direction of analysis. Uh, many companies uh, a few, few years ago, and, and for some, this is still at least partially true, uh, use these tools to produce charts, graphs, dashboards that were specced out ahead of time. Um, but increasingly, people are using these platforms to do real analysis, uh, to test out ideas, test out relationships in their data, uh, and just explore the data. Um, and very often, the analysis is more like open-ended exploration as opposed to a prescriptive approach where the person might be testing a particular hypothesis with a particular result in mind. And I think what you'll see in our discussion today is that it's this kind of open-ended analysis where you really see what Click likes to call the associative difference, which is something that amongst the tools that are out there is something that is unique to Click. Um, and uh, Jim's going to give us a more detailed explanation, but I briefly, when we talk about the associative engine and why it's so helpful when you're doing open-ended exploration, um, basically, most visualization tools are SQL query based. So if you're working with data and drilling down into deeper categories, the filters function like a select query. So you're basically adding where clauses to the query to narrow down the result set. And queries do that just fine. Um, 
the downside to query-based filtering is as you drill down into the data with a query-based tool, you lose the surrounding contextual data that doesn't fit your criterion. Uh, the associative engine, which has been the backbone of Click's analytical platform since the product's early days in the 90s, works differently because it doesn't remove that contextual data from your view as you're drilling down into it. You can still see that contextual or associated data and go right back to that data at any time. So as you're maneuvering through the data, to use the hiking analogy that I've got here on the slide, you see um, you don't lose sight of the forest for the trees. Hmm. One of the ways you could describe the difference is Query-based an analysis works well if you know where you're going. Associative analysis provides the opportunity to explore. Or to go back to the hiking analogy again, query-based analysis is like hiking in the forest and following the trail. But with associative analysis, it's more like being able to explore the whole forest with a map or GPS so that you can see where you came from, you see what's over the next hill, things of that nature. Um, so I want to talk about a couple of simple use cases here. Um, Jim uh, may have some more um, in, as in, when he comes up, but uh, here's a couple that, that, that I have handy. Um, you could have a financial firm with, with two key lines of business, banking and wealth management. Um, and a data analyst wants to see if there's opportunities to cross sell those products. But really, with a traditional query-based filtering tool, he can drill down into the banking-only clients and with with a query based tool, that's really all he's going to see once he's drilled down into that into that world. But then, with a uh, associative tool like Click, you can still see all of the data for the brokerage only clients as well. Um, another good use case: uh, you, a marketing analyst uh, is looking at a database of companies for B two B sales opportunities and. The data, data might classify companies by size, business line, geographic location, et cetera. So the analyst might drill down into companies under the business line apparel, for example, and select a company that looks interesting to him. Um, the associative engine will also show him the other categories that company belongs to, even in when he's in drill down mode. So in click, you'll still be able to see, for example, well, maybe this company uh, has other, uh, you know, other categories as well that it belongs to, like housewares, for example. It might it might do business in both areas. Uh, once you've drilled down in a traditional query based tool, you won't see that. But with Click, you pretty much see the whole picture. Um, so, hopefully, that gives you an introduction into kind of what the associative analytics engine is, why it's different and how it's extremely helpful when you're doing open and exploration of data. Um, but with that, I think it's a good spot for me to hand it over to Jim, who can tell you more about the associative engine, how Click is using it to power what they call associative insights, and get a little more detail. Um, so with that, Jim. Great. Thanks, Aaron, for that introduction. Uh, if you can let me share my screen, that would be great. Yes. Perfect. So hopefully uh, everybody just a quick check to see my slides. Everything, everybody can see those. Yep. Looks good. Okay. Again, Aaron, uh, thanks for that introduction. It, it, was, it was set up very well. What I'm going to show again, everybody, my name is Jim Smith. Um, I work for Click. I'm what's called a technical partner manager. So I work with our partners such as Athena. Um, what I wanted to do is in the first 90 seconds, just give you a quick uh, overview of who Click is. We're a software company that's been around for about 30 years. Um, we were born in the business intelligence and data analytics space. So we've been doing that uh, for that long. We've got 40,000 customers uh, globally. Um, the other thing I like to point out about this is we are the leader in three Gartner Magic Quadrant reports. So what I'll talk about today is kind of what we do on the data analytics and business intelligence side. Uh, we've been a leader in that Gardner Magic Quadrant for 14 years, but through acquisition, we're also a leader in the uh, data integration and data quality Magic Quadrants as well. Um, so that's just a little background on the company. We do have a por portfolio or two product families that we uh, offer in the market. We have data integration and quality. Um, that's on the left-hand side of the slide. And we did a presentation last month in regards to that 
What I really are gonna, I'm really going to highlight today are our analytics capabilities. And as Mayor Aaron mentioned, the, the associative engine that we provide. So just a little overview about our analytics tools. This is the tool that you would use to create a dashboard or visualizations, but it's a lot more than that. We also have reporting capabilities as part of the solution. You can embed those reports in any application that your users need to utilize. So if you want it in something like Salesforce or Marketo, you can put uh, click directly in those environments. And we're also very big on kind of proactive alerting so that users don't always have to look at a report. They can get an email when there's some sort of data anomaly that they want to uh, be notified of. Last thing is we also have artificial intelligence built in to our business analytics tool. And we're not gonna talk a lot about that today because there's another session on that, but know that those capabilities are built into the, to the uh, solution. So let's just talk a little bit about what I'll call ClickSense. Um, for those who aren't familiar, Click started in the business intelligence market with a product called ClickView 30 years ago. About 10 years ago, we came out with the next generation of solution called ClickSense. So that's our visualization tool that has this associative engine at the heart of it. And the way that I wanted to start off talking about this is a lot of times when people are looking at these types of solutions, they're looking for a visualization tool. This is an example, it's a little bit dated. These screenshots are probably four or five years old, but these are six visualization vendors in the market. And just to give you an idea of, of the types of visualizations you can use when you use those solutions. And the great thing about visualization tools is it makes it so much easier for business users to consume information as opposed to looking at, you know, 100,000 rows and 50 columns of data. But the issue with visualization tools is if you start to look at a lot of them, they start to all look very similar. Um, it's hard to differentiate, you know, whose map is better than somebody else's map or whose color of a bar, bar chart is better. So what we like to do at Click is talk a little bit about what differentiates visualization tools. And I think Aaron's done a really good job of talking about the fact that what differentiates Click um, as, as a solution is this associative engine. And again, if you compare Click on the right-hand side that uses this associative engine versus what all the other BI tools use, which is a query-based tool sitting on a relational database, business users get more information from a tool that has an associative engine. And the way that I would summarize it is they not only get the answer to the question they ask, they also get answers to questions they didn't ask. And that's one of the things that makes Click unique. And the way that I wanted to kind of highlight this slide is actually by showing you the tool at a very high level. Again, if you want to see more of the tool, please talk to Athena because they are a, a Click certified partner. But here's an example of a dashboard in Click. So again, like all other visualization tools, you've got bar charts and donut charts and scatter plots and line graphs. And this is just a subset of what Click can provide. There are lots of other charts. You can change properties of these charts so that you can display the data the, exactly the way the user wants to see it. And you can interact with a visualization tool. So what I'm going to show you next is how we interact with with Click, but you could do it with any other tool in the market as well. So for this example, if I wanted to look at Platinum customers, I can click on Platinum and you'll see the screen change and all the numbers change. Because Click is a, Click's associative engine is an in-memory solution, it's actually, it responds very quickly, much quicker than if you had to run, run SQL queries to update all these charts. Okay, but this is pretty similar to most visualization tools. You can make selections, you can slice and dice, you can filter the information and see it that way. What I wanted to do though, is just with uh, one other screen, I'm gonna come to what might be one of the ugliest dashboard screens you've ever seen, but it will allow me to highlight kind of how this associative model works. So on the top of this screen, you're gonna see five list boxes of dimensions in my data model. So customer status, that's like our frequent flyer program in this particular data model. The regions where we have customers, the customer segments, our customers and products. And what I'm going to do on the top is I'm going to show you how a user would slice and dice using Click. And the bottom of this screen shows you the same dimensions, and it's going to show you how other solutions 
would see the same information. And this is really going to highlight what Aaron talked about, the fact that you can see more as a business user or a data analyst because of this associative engine. So just like on the previous screen, if I wanted to focus on Platinum customers, I can go ahead and select Platinum. And you'll notice how the tool turns that selection green and it puts this tile on the top of the screen that says, I've selected Platinum customers. What I wanna draw your attention to though is region, segment, and customer. Hopefully you'll see some of those values have a white background and some of them have a gray background. That's the associative engine in action. And what that tells the user is that you have Platinum customers in the East, the North, the North Central, and the Southeast region. So a white background means there's an association, a relationship to that data. A gray background means there's no association. What that tells me as a business user is we have no Platinum customers in the South and the West region. Now that might look like kind of a trivial display, but that provides a lot of business value to organizations. So right away, when a business user starts to look at Platinum customers, yes, they know that they have customers in these four regions, but why don't they have Platinum customers in the South and the West region? We sometimes, sometimes call that gray value kind of the golden nugget because that's what organizations typically want to follow up on. If you look on the bottom part of the screen, a, a solution that's query based, if you selected platinum like I did above, you would still see the platinum customers and you'd see the regions and the segments where you have platinum customers. But what you don't see, the things that get canceled out because of the, of the SQL query, are things that you'll just never pick up with other solutions. So the way that business users actually do this, if I go back to that dashboard, is they're gonna start interacting with their dashboard and they're gonna say, hmm, I'm looking at this bar chart and I wanna investigate snack foods. So I'll select on that and make that selection. And then I look at the donut chart and I wanna focus more in on my uh, North Territory customers. And I can do that and I can see the numbers change. but. Notice what we're seeing on the left-hand side. We're seeing the different segments that we sell snack foods to in the North region. And yes, I can see that we sell it to catering and banquets and convenience stores and healthcare organizations. But what I find most interesting is we're not selling snack foods to hotels and clubs. And that's what users of Click find most interesting about this solution. It's much more than a visualization tr tool. It's truly a data analytics solution. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what Click does from a visualization standpoint, but also highlights how we think we're a little unique based on this associative engine and the benefits that we give for data analysts or business users who are investigating their information. So with that, I was gonna um, stop my presentation and pass it back to Eric. All right. That is fantastic. I, I love the way you showed how what doesn't have a relationship can be the most important part. Because like you said, wait, we're not selling to what was it, hotels and, and other channels. It's like, that's a pretty big channel. Yeah. Like, why aren't we doing that? And it just jumps out at you as the key. You don't have to write a bunch of queries. I mean, there are some very interesting graph databases I've seen, but you have to be a power user. You have to know yeah. what query to send to the system. So you have to know a lot about the data in the first place, or it's just, it's a longer process to get to the nut, right? Because that's yeah. what you want. You call it like a golden nugget, right? And when it just jumps out of the screen, right into your face, it's like, oh, well, that's what we have to focus on. I just think that is very powerful because then you can also drill around and look around. And, and every time you change something, the visual changes, and to me, that's really important because it's disparity or change that we notice the most. And not to get all deep, but I remember a long time ago thinking about snakes and how they say a snake notices movement. So if you see a snake, just be still. Right. And to you, it's going to look like a tree or you're going to look like a tree, right? This is a, yep. it, won't, it won't bite you. And that got me thinking, you know, change is what we notice in the world. Change is what jumps out at us. Yep. And so when something changes quickly, it's like, wait, what is that? It, it triggers your attention. So when you can have this experience where everything you touch changes the view, that's discovery. And yeah. by the way, Aaron, I loved your expedition versus exploration metaphor. I'm going to steal that. <laughs> I'm going to use that <laughs> time, time and again. It's very, very clever because exploration is where you don't know where you want to go. Expedition, we know where we're going. 
We just got to get there faster and more safely. I think that's a very, very compelling story. Yep. All right, folks, this wraps up the first part of our presentation and the radio show comes next.